here's a real quick look about on uh, how I do my images. I use uh, Ink Aid pre coats because they have like 15 different types, and this one is a clear matte, one of my favorites. Gives you a clear, clear surface, but it so you can see what's underneath it, like the grains, and um, the grain or the thread work or whatever it is, and then it has like a matte in it so it gives you a nice bright image. This is Rime and it you could also use Luchador for this project. Once I pre-coat it I let that dry obviously and I'll just show you really quick here these are uh, little smaller versions of the print that I use for this workshop but you can you can put them on you can do an eight and a half by eleven which makes it very easy. It's thin. It's not really heavyweight. You can take a masking tape and put your surface on the carrier sheet to put it through the printer. Or you can take a double face tape, which this is, and you can see how this is a porous. It's a non-porous because it's polyester, but it's porous because it goes through to the carrier sheet and you wouldn't want this in your printer. So anyway, this is a real easy surface to print and it's really fun to use for these kind of things. So the next part of this is to get myself a base and I love to use anything that's textural. So going back to my needle arts, crocheting is a really good thing for me to do different things that you can crochet with. I really like to use hemp when I'm used doing an art piece and that's what this is. And for those of you who crochet, it's pretty simple. I did a chain stitch across and then I came back around and just did a double crochet, a chain stitch, a double crochet and kept crocheting inside of it and made this little grid thing. Now once I do that, I usually wash it because sometimes the um, the actual hemp doesn't smell very well and I I wash it and then I press it because I kinda of block it out now if I'm using a really uh, thin hemp I might not do that but for this you know a thin hemp I might just press but for this I'm gonna block it out and then I'm gonna look at my prints on top of it and then the next thing is that I'm going to melt my prints to go on top of it now I'm just going to say a word about melting prints. Um, I use this. We won't, we won't do it for the video because not only is it really a bad thing to do inside of a studio, you need a lot of ventilation, but it makes a lot of noise. So what I will do is I will use this heat tool, this heat tool that is like an embossing tool. Now I have used um, real nasty heat tools and um, you can really melt them away, but this this one this one here gives me a better um, overall melt. So anyway, here's my thing I want to say about it though. If you're not going to do digital prints and you're going to want to use something like Rime or Luchador to make yourself some burned or any other kind of synthetics to make yourself some burnt surfaces or melted surfaces, my advice is that before you paint or add anything to it, you burn it because once you paint, the fibers get all clogged up and they don't do that when you're using certain pre-coats to um, print them so they melt really nicely so if you are going to melt and try to paint and add different things to your surfaces I would melt first and then add things to my surfaces so then we'll take it to the next thing we're gonna do to this so now we're melted and what I'll do is I'll pull things apart so that I have ragged edges at the places where it hasn't melted through and I can start to start stacking these things on my base. So if I leave part of the print together for the very very bottom I still tear some things off of it and then add some little pieces in and then what will happen here is I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew these pieces down so they set up against the border here and if I think they're full coming over I'll just push them in so they'll kinda of be even with the edge because I can start to do all sorts of things to get the edge jagged but for now I'm going to sew this down on my sewing machine and get all these pieces in a position where they will be stuck here and so I can move it around and work on it 
So now I took it to my sewing machine and I stitched it down so it's pretty solid on here. We're not talking about a great job of stitching. We're talking about just getting it down. And um, I mean like no matter, depending on what you want to do, you can do whatever you want to do with it. I just like stitch around it and make it stick to the bottom. And I'll show you where I'm going with this and then I'm going to show you how I do that. Okay, this is a sister piece that's already been worked on and here you can see the stitching where it's holding down this bottom layer and then I'm coming into it and making all sorts of little textural pieces that stand up from the surface so I'm going to show you how I do that it's pretty fun okay first of all I always have little stuff hanging out because I do a bunch of printing and so when I print for a project I make sure that, you know, I have lots of prints that will go with what I've got. I'm not looking for an exact match in anything. So, and then most of the time I'm looking for like just little pieces of something to put together. I'm going to use Fireline, which is just a fishing wire. And I get it just from um, like Walmart or stores where they have fishing stuff. And I get it either a six or an eight pound test. The reason I do that is because thread over a period of time can rot or do weird things. And I would like this work to last a little bit. So here's what I do. I have my beads and what I use is an assortment of little beads. And then I use some actually big horsey kind of beads. And the way I make this surface kind of stick up texturally is that first of all see this is a little away so right here I know that I could put a big bead and I've already taken it up from the surface to start to cause some of this surface dimension once I do that then I will take another bead and I will put that bead in the space if I can get a bead on my thing okay then I will do this then I'm gonna take a little piece sometimes it'll match sometimes it won't and this bead will separate this from the surface and I'm doing such a great job here aren't I and then I'm gonna take another bead and probably now I'll take a couple of these little ones I don't know if that one is gonna go on my needle all the way I have some little ones in here that won't go on my needle all the way that are driving me crazy but it's too late to try to pick them out I'm working so then I'm gonna do this on the top here and then I'm going to take a little teeny bit of color, maybe just a teeny bit, and put it back in the corner here. And so I'm starting to just build some textural things going on in my corners. And then I will keep this going. And we'll come back and take a look at this and see where it's gone to. So as I proceed with this piece, I'm starting to add little elements of wire. So this is a brass wire that is about 28 gauge, so it's very soft and it's easy to crochet and turn into shapes, maybe coil around. So I'm adding this underneath some of these elements here. And then as I go forward, this will start, this will get more and more um, stuff on the surface. There's lots of areas that I'm going to fill in and then some that I'll let be on their own and then at the end I might come and melt some little places it'll just really be up to me when I get to that point so it's just still a work in progress and you'll see the finished piece pretty soon so now this is the point where I actually am just finishing it up I've done some stitching right here that has been this type of thread this is a uh, one of those metallic kind of threads just to give some surface texture here and I wind it in between and underneath and around it's totally a what we would call a baseball or running stitch nothing fancy just coming in and out of different places then I will use this wire here and I think you can see from the back that I've been you know using it in and, in and out and what I actually do is I use it like it's a needle and thread so because this edge here and the different surfaces that I'm working with are very um, soft I can just take the edge of the needle 
or actually the thing, the wire, and I just take it from the front to the back. And there it comes. And then I can continue to do just little bits of adding some light and, you know, I'll see what else I think needs to be done and that'll wrap it up.